Previously on Engineering the Jigsaw, we've talked about how ECUs make use of serial communications within vehicle EE systems to allow software on them to communicate within the system, making use of digital signaling. And we've talked about the AutoZar methodology in a, in a simple way when we talked about how we think about our functions and how they might interact and then describing application software components that are needed and allocating them to ECUs and describing how networks join them together. And really, this is all quite simple conceptually. Surely it's slightly more difficult in practice. Let's go find out. Hi everybody, I'm Ian Cunningham from Vector GB. Welcome to this episode of Engineering the Jigsaw Intermediate episode number two, how does ECU software communicate? In this episode, we are going to start to look at the reality behind the huge simplifications that we've made in the past, in particular in episode F3 and episode F6. So it networks in vehicles and uh, our autos are essentials episodes. This is actually the start of a short sequence of episodes where we are going to take a much deeper look at the Autosar classic platform methodology, covering both software and communication design. As a recap from episode F6, where we talked about autos are our first step in the Autosar Classic Platform methodology is to think about the software functions we may need from our application and the information that they need to share. An important architectural consideration when we're doing this is that each of our software components should only perform a single task. And this is known as the principle of separation of concerns or SOC for short. Um, now, following SOC actually makes it easier for us to develop and test and debug as needed our software components. And it leads us to the idea of an atomic software component or atomic for short. Um, atomic in this sense is something that cannot be usefully subdivided. We're not trying to split the atom when we're making software. To enable separation of concerns though, what we need to think is that this means that each sensor value that we may need to make use of in a vehicle EE system is monitored by one individual software component. And then that software component should share the sensor value to be used by other atomics that need to make use of that information that's being gathered by that sensor. And similarly, any other information that may be needed by a number of atomics, it, such as the present vehicle speed, should be calculated one time and then be shared with any atomic that needs it. So Autos our classic platform defines a virtual function bus or VFB concept. And this concept exists so that we can assume that any information is able to be shared between atomics without providers needing to know any details of consumers and, and vice versa. So we can develop our software in a completely virtual space where we just assume that all software can share all possible information that may need to be shared, which is a great starting point because it means we can ignore the complexities introduced by hardware until a later point. Now, we need to, of course, describe how our software components, our atomics, are going to interact with the virtual function bus. And to do this, we define the ingress and egress points of information on each atomic. And we call these ingress and egress points ports. Where we have a software component that needs information, we describe a require port. That software requires information. It's a, or an R port for sure. When a, a, an atomic provides information or supplies information, we describe a provide port. So that software component is going to provide information. That's a P port for sure. Now, Autozar also provides the concept if you'll forgive the pun, of a provide require port. It's advanced, we won't talk about that anymore, just know that it's technically possible to have a, a effectively a bi-directional port. What we then do though, is once we've defined all our P ports and R ports, we create connectors that describe which P ports relate to which R ports. So our end aim is that all R ports 
that need information should be connected to a P port that provides that information. If we don't end up in that situation, clearly we've got some software somewhere that can't get the information it needs to function. And that's a bad thing. So information, yeah, well, the exact information that we want to share between ports is then described according to an interface. And this is a good time to talk about types because in AutoZar, most, if not all definitions are made via a concept of type. And we have things such as atomic software component types. We have data types. And a, a reference is made to the type definition wherever we want to use it. So this means we define something once and then we refer to it when we want to use it. So we don't get, ever end up in a situation where we kind of end up having two slightly different definitions of vehicle speed. We define vehicle speed one time, and then we use that wherever we want to use the vehicle speed. And we avoid problems later in integration where people have assumed a different definitions, or we've got redundant definitions that have got out of step. All that is not part of the AutoZar process. The uses or instances of types are known as prototypes, and we can consider interfaces actually to be a special kind of type. Another kind of type which is quite important is the software composition type, or composition for short. And compositions allow us to aggregate atomics, and this allows us to describe complex software in a hierarchical fashion by taking kind of larger building blocks or sets consisting of many atomics and deploying those into our, our system level design at the virtual function bus. Now a composition type only contains prototypes so anything we want to put in there has to be defined as a type and then we reference that type to define the content of the compositions and the composition can contain more compositions but also eventually of course we get down to atomics. Atomics are where the real behavior is. Compositions are just a way for us to group sets of behavior together. And we have a special kind of port, which is called a delegation port, that allows atomics within one composition to communicate with atomics in another, regardless of the numbers of layers of hierarchy that we decide to put in between. That's all we're going to talk about today. So relatively short, but brief introduction to the AutoZar classic platform methodology. And a cornerstone concept, a real basic part of this is that we use the virtual function bus during design. This means that we can design our software components without needing to consider any hardware aspects in terms of location of sources and destination of information, and any needs of network. And we just think about the software and the information it needs to share, no more than that. In doing this, we need to consider separation of concerns and split our software into atomics. And by defining the interfaces that are used at P ports and R ports, we describe how software consumes and provides information. The type concept gives us a way to describe or define something one time and use it many, many times. And then compositions with delegation ports provide us a way to structure our software design. Now, this is not where the story ends. As mentioned, this is the first of a series. In further intermediate episodes, we're going to look at how software component ports are described in more detail. We're also going to look at how information is described at different levels in the AutoZar methodology. We will also look at how that conceptual design aid of the virtual function bus ends up inside real ECUs and a real software that's running inside real ECUs. If you can't wait, please visit our website to find articles and webinars on the AutoZar Classic software and system design process in our digital engineering platform Prevision and DaVinci Developer Classic. Please also look out for our free e-learning resources and details of our technical training in this area. Please let us know if you'd like to know how to approach software and system design in the AutoZar Adaptive Platform because some of the concepts are different and so we're not covering AutoZar Adaptive Platform in this series. If you want us to cover that or any other topic that you can think of or if you've got questions on this episode, please drop us an email to engineering.jigsaw at vector.com. Leave us a comment wherever you found this video. Remember to hit the bell so you can get notified when we're pushing out a new episode or other video via the Vector YouTube channel. I'd like to thank my colleagues, 
Mahmoud Ibrahim and Alexander Ginnett from Vector GB who've helped in preparing some of the information that we're included in this episode and also providing reviews of, of the content. My name is Ian Cunningham from Vector GB. We'll see you for another episode soon.